Welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series, which can be heard on VHHA.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get podcasts. We're a member of the Public Health Podcast Network, the Virginia Audio Collective, the NYC Podcast Network, and the Family Podcast Network. And we're on the radio each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, 107.7 107.7 FM and 8:20 AM across Central Virginia and 16:50 AM in Hampton Roads and Wednesdays at 1 PM on 93.9 FM in Richmond. Please send any questions, comments, feedback, or guest suggestions to PCF Podcast at VHHA.com. Again, that's PCF Podcast at VHHA.com. And today we're excited to be joined by Meredith Noha, the Interpersonal Violence Program Coordinator at Chesapeake Regional Healthcare, for a conversation about the hospital's HOPE program, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and more. So, with that, welcome to the program, Meredith. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's our pleasure. So let's just start by introducing you a little bit more and getting to know you a bit better. As we noted, you currently serve as the Interpersonal Violence Program Coordinator at Chesapeake Regional Healthcare with the Healing Opportunities Providing Empowerment, or HOPE, program. From what I gather, you have worked in both the public and private sector as a sexual assault response coordinator in the past with Norfolk Naval Station and in your current role at Chesapeake Regional. You also previously worked as a police officer and a probation officer, from what I gather, So with that little bit of information, I wonder if you could tell us more about your professional journey to your current work, as well as anything else you'd like our listeners to know about you. Sure, I'd be happy to. I started my career in the police department here in Chesapeake and was an officer for them for several years before I realized that I felt like I was in a reactive position where I really wanted to be more proactive. From there, I went to probation and parole where I was a probation officer for sex offenders and had the responsibility of supervising sex offenders that had been released to probation and enforcing all of the restrictions and so forth on them. From there, I had the opportunity to work for the Navy as a sexual assault response coordinator at Naval Station Norfolk. So we led the largest team of the sexual assault response program for the Navy across the fleet and handled more than 400 cases a year with them. And so we had the opportunity to grow that program over a number of years and then was able to take all of my experiences through those positions and combine them into one opportunity in starting the program of the interpersonal violence at Chesapeake Regional Healthcare in 2020. And as I understand it, as you just mentioned, you came on board with Chesapeake Regional in 2020, just before the onset of the pandemic, to launch the Healing Opportunities Providing Empowerment or HOPE program to serve individuals impacted by interpersonal violence. And we should disclose here that the HOPE program is one of several hospital-based violence intervention programs in Virginia, supported with grant funding that flows through the VHHA Foundation, which is a charitable division of our organization. So with that, a little bit of background, if you would, can you tell us more about the work of the HOPE program as well as the development of the program over these last several years? Certainly. Yes, you are correct. I came on, I was hired right as everything shut down. And there's nothing more enjoyable than starting a brand new program in healthcare during a pandemic. (laughs) So I, I had to become innovative and think of ways around, because obviously the hospital's focus is going to be on the pandemic and the needs of the citizens and so forth. So we incorporated ourselves where we could at that time, took the opportunity to build our standards, build the programmatic requirements and so forth for the interpersonal violence aspect. Chesapeake is not a level one trauma center, so we don't generally receive the stabbings and gunshots that a level one trauma center would. And so the hospital administration chose to focus on the interpersonal violence track that was available at the time. There is not another community-based sexual assault or domestic violence response entity in the city of Chesapeake. We are the only one. The only other one associated with this type of violence is through the court system. So victims that were affected by interpersonal violence that weren't participating in the court process didn't really have anybody local that they could go to. So we really felt it was our mission to fill that gap, to provide the services that just weren't available prior to our coming into existence. Well, that's great to hear that this was a need that was identified because there wasn't a comparable program to serve individuals impacted by interpersonal violence. And this is a great example of a hospital, in this case, Chesapeake, stepping in and creating something. 
In the past few years, hospital-based violence intervention programs around Virginia have served more than 4,600 individuals impacted by community violence, resulting in a dramatic reduction in re-injury rates among that population and yielding more than $34 million in health care cost avoidance. So it's clear that these programs are having a tangible and positive effect. With your program, Meredith, as I understand it, there's someone on call around the clock to help people with a variety of support services and needs. A past guest who's been on this podcast, Daryl Anderson, is a shooting survivor from Richmond, and he now works to provide peer support to other people impacted by violence. I share that story because he spoke in his own words about the value of these programs and, and how powerful they are. And so I wonder if you might be able to share some of the feedback you've received from some of the folks that you've worked with about these programs and how they've helped those individuals. We've had the good fortune to be able to assist a good number of people in times that are viewed as really traumatic for most individuals. It's one of the lowest points of their lives because not only were they subjected to violence, but they were subjected to violence that was caused usually at the hands of somebody they love, somebody they care about and have an ongoing relationship with, which is a total different level of violation of that trust. And so in dealing with them, we've been able to help them reestablish lives on their own where they're free from the violence or the threat of the violence. We've had numerous people offer to volunteer for our program as well as wish to come back and speak to people in regards to their feelings and um, what they went through. Because our program is so new, we want to ensure that the people that we have assisted are in the right place in order to do that, that speaking on what they went through wouldn't be traumatic or negative to them in any kind of nature. So we haven't really implemented that at that point because we're about two and a half years into providing services. So we continue our relationships with the people that we have assisted in ongoing manner, ensuring that they're on the right track, follow up so that they know somebody is still caring and checking in on them. We just haven't taken anybody up on that offer to speak on their experience at this point. Well, it's good to hear that you're staying connected with the people you serve to make sure that they are moving forward and their lives are progressing after that traumatic experience. So thank you for sharing that. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. According to RAIN, which is the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, one out of six American women and one out of 33 American men have been the victim of an attempted or completed assault in their lifetime. I know that in the past, Chesapeake Regional has hosted events, including National Denim Day, as a way to raise awareness. I wonder if you can share what plans or activities the hospital may have going on in April to raise awareness and to focus on these issues. We're excited that this year we are partnering with the Chesapeake Police Department. They have agreed to allow us to place teal ribbons on their police car antennas for the month of April. We've had a good relationship with them, but this year in this capacity, we're doing something that we've never done before. And I think it's just a small illustration to the citizens of Chesapeake that there are resources out there, that the police department cares about people that are dealing with this type of violence. And there are referrals and people that have the capacity to to assist in these type of situations. We've also requested the hospital change the uplighting of the building to Teal for the month of April, and they've agreed to do that. And we've reached out to City Hall as well. They have uplighting that we've requested. We haven't quite nailed that down yet, but that's a work in progress that we intend to do. It's a really fine balance for the month of April because you want people to know that there's support, but you also don't want to trigger people who have had these kind of experiences. So we really take it seriously as to kind of find an in-between. We don't want to be in your face with it because we don't want to put anybody in a negative situation. But we want people to know that we care and that these things are out there. So we try to do a moderate to low-key plan for the month of April. And again, this year we will be participating in Denim Day. The administration of the hospital allows anybody who's non-clinical to wear jeans for that day. Those that are clinical can wear stickers that marketing has made for us in support. Well, sounds like there's a lot of good collaboration going on, as you mentioned, the police department, city hall, obviously the hospital administration. So that's good to hear. For someone who might be listening to this, who may be experiencing domestic violence or intimate partner violence or sexual assault or even human trafficking, Meredith, what would you tell them about the availability of resources and support to encourage them to seek help? 
It's a really difficult thing to do, again, because the nature of the violence comes from somebody that you trust and usually are in some type of relationship with. So admitting that is a difficult first step. First, know that we're incredibly proud of you for being able to do so for having survived everything that you have been to to this point. And there are resources that are available to you without judgment, regardless of your circumstance. There are people that care and that want to help you get through this. RAIN, as you indicated, is a national resource that can find those local in your area that have these capabilities, as well as the Virginia Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence Coalition. They have numbers of all the local entities as well. So if you're able to make a call, reach out, there's going to be somebody there that's available to help you. And we should point out that the Virginia Family Violence and Sexual Assault Hotline is 1-800-838-8238. Again, 1-800-838-8238. That's available if you're someone who needs assistance. And then, Meredith, are there any other phone numbers or emails for the HOPE program that you'd like to share? Absolutely. Our 24-7 response number is 757 707-3939. And myself or our program advocate, we're the only two that respond. So you'll get somebody that's directly affiliated with the HOPE program, as well as our email is hopeprogram at chesapeakeregional.com. Okay, I appreciate you sharing those resources with our listeners. And then before we let you go, we do have a tradition here on the podcast to ask each of our guests a pair of personal questions. And and these are a little quirky, and often they follow a serious conversation or a conversation about a serious subject, which this is, to lighten the mood a little bit as we close things out. To keep things interesting, we have a list of 10 mystery questions. So if you would, (laughs) please choose two numbers between 1 and 10, and I will give you the corresponding questions. (laughs) <laughs> okay. It's like a roulette wheel. Number two and number four. Okay. Number two. If you were stranded on a deserted island, what one book, one album, and one movie would you take with you to keep yourself company? We will spot you a copy of the religious text of your choice. So other than that, what are your three entertainment survival kit picks? Hmm. Movie's easy. Steel Magnolias. Please, this is your chance to do something for your fellow man. Knock her lights out, Malia. Let go of me. Malia, you just missed a chance of a lifetime. Half a chick pin parish should give the eye teeth to take a whack of ways up. <laughs> you are a pig from hell. <laughs> I'm a true Southern girl, so that's required. Um, (laughs) The soundtrack to The Greatest Showman would be the album. And, oh, the book, There's Too Many Choices. That's the most difficult. Hmm. My Sister's Keeper. Okay. I think. All right. We'll stick with that one. Number four, which, if any of the following things, do you consider most plausible? Bigfoot, Yeti, (laughs) the Loch Ness Monster, or UFOs and aliens? If none of those apply, but you believe in something else along those lines, please share it. Hmm. I would say Loch Ness Monster, if I had to pick amongst those, because the water is so dark and murky that it's completely plausible to me that something might be crawling around in there. Yep, never know what's lurking just beneath the surface. (laughs) Exactly. Well, that is going to bring us to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so that you know when new episodes are available. And we want to once again thank our guest, Meredith Noha with Chesapeake Regional Healthcare and the HOPE program for being with us today. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. 